Okay, this is a video for my A-level electronics students. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can breadboard a PIC uh, 16F88 microcontroller. Uh, so we're going to get this in the breadboard, and also I'm going to show you all the uh, setup for the, or at least the wiring, uh, so that we could get the, the PIC kit. Uh, this is PIC kit three. Um, also connected in so it would be possible to program it in circuit. So in circuit serial programming is the um, term that you will hear. So um, first of all uh, let's just have a quick look at the setup. So I've got four AA batteries in series giving me a total of six volts. Uh, for my convenience I've also wired in switch and then those are my power wires. So I can turn this on and off. Uh, that's that's rather convenient. You don't have to have it like that, but that's where I'm going to work. And um, I want to have my zero volt rail down here. I want to have my positive rail here. Now, if you remember, uh, we've got six volts um, here, maximum six volts, assuming uh, there are four AA alkaline batteries. Six volts is too much, and also there's always a risk that you might put the wires around the wrong way. So I'm going to include a 1N4001 diode, this thing, which is um, not only is it going to give me reverse uh, polarity protection, just in case something's put around the wrong way, uh, but also it's going to drop 0.7 volts. So if that's 6, we drop 0.7, so we'll have 5.3 as our supply rail. So um, first of all, the black was zero volts, so I'm going to stick that in there. So now we've got zero volts along there. However, uh, you'll see that this blue line is broken here. That means that that bottom row is not connected to that bottom row there. So uh, let's just now make that continuous. So hopefully you understand what I've done there. I've just, where there was a break, I've now joined that up. And in fact, before we forget to do so, let's do the same along the top. So now that's a continuous zero volt rail there, and that will be my positive rail along there. Um, and uh, so let's take this, this is uh, six volts potential, or will be when the switch is turned on. So I'm then gonna put that there. So we're into uh, column number five there. And then the diode, making sure it goes around the right way. Uh, you should know the right way around. The cathode uh, is the grey, so we've got the anode, the more positively biased side there. Uh, so you see that that's going into the top rail along there. And uh, then what I generally recommend to students is to include a power on LED so you can see when the thing's switched on. That will remind you, hopefully. I've got a 330 ohm resistor there. So let's just uh, drop down into... Well, that happens to be column seven, but you know, you can put it in any way you like. And uh, then, so I've got an LED here. Now you can see I've, uh, or you may guess that I've already uh, previously cut these legs off, uh, trimmed them down a little bit. The long leg, it was long, it still is long. I've also dog legged out like that. So that's the more positive side. So that's the anode. Uh, that's the shorter leg, also the flat side is the uh, cathode. So let's just, bridge across that slot which runs down the middle. Remember those uh, contacts are separate from those contacts. There's no continuity there. And so let's just uh, complete the circuit there. Hopefully you get a good view. Okay, so then if I turn the switch on and it's not on. Now the reason for that you can probably see I got that wire in the wrong one. There we go. There. Okay. So my power's working. Now, uh, later on, if you happen to short out the power, maybe go a direct short rail to rail, your LED won't light up. So if you ever turn the switch on and your LED doesn't light up, turn the switch off straight away. Right, so um, other things that we're going to do, um, well we're going to need the, the pick in somewhere, that's not actually pushed in a moment, that's just loose, and we're also going to need the pick kit somewhere, and then potentially in the future, you know, uh, I've got an LED array here, so maybe that's going to go over there, so you need to have give it a little bit of thought as to where roughly you want things to be. 
don't uh, leave yourself too little room to get your pit kit in. That's that's probably the most uh, common problem. Um, okay, so I reckon probably slap the uh, pick chip in. And by the way, it's a pick 16F88 uh, in the middle. Now these um, 88s are better than what we used to use. We used to use pick 16F84As, which required an external oscillator or clock. Uh, these don't because we can use an internal clock so uh, that actually makes the circuit even more simple than it ever was before. Pin 14, by the way pin 1 is bottom left there, uh, pin 14 is uh, has to go up to the positive power supply and pin 5 it needs to go down to 0 volts. Now for the pick itself, that's, that's almost actually completed, believe it or not. It only needs power. However, pin four, uh, and remember it's going to be one, two, three, four. Uh, pin four is the master clearance, an active low, meaning it's going to reset itself when it's low. So to stop it resetting itself, what you could do, uh, you could pull that high and then that wouldn't be resetting itself. Well, because we're going to use a pick kit, we're actually going to have to do something a little bit different from that. But not very different, but uh, we're going to use a resistor. Now, the, here's the pick kit, and you'll see that there's a 6-pin female connector there. 0.1 inch space, it's standard header spacing. And I've just, uh, or I haven't just done it, but I've previously sorted one of these up, so I've made up a like a right angle connector on a bit of strip board. If you're one of my students, you're most likely going to have to do one of those yourselves. Um, so, uh, that can go in like that and then it can plug into wherever that means that you can then uh, give the picket to the next student in the classroom no problem at all and then you can just plug it back in so that's that's quite handy. Oh by the way um, you'll notice that um, you notice that that triangle there the triangle means that, that is pin one so pin one is there okay that's that's going to be really important to know. Now pin one Pin one is the uh, the or, or pin one of the pick kit is the master clear pin, so that connects to pin four of the pick because pin four is the uh, master clear as well. Uh, but like I uh, mentioned earlier, we also have to uh, do something else. We actually to stop the uh, to stop the microcontroller just keep on resetting itself. I mean, at the moment it would because we haven't pulled pin four up to the supply voltage. So I need to use a pull-up resistor. Now, there's some flexibility over what values you can use. Uh, so 4.7K uh, would be all right, up to 10K would be okay. Probably other values outside that range will also be okay, but um, I've used 10K there. So I'm going to take that, um, so I've pulled it up to the supply, and then I'm going to connect that to, that's the pin for column. Hopefully you can see that quite clearly. Okay, so that's pin one. Remember pin one is the triangle, pin one of the uh, picket interface. Uh, pin two is the supply voltage. So let's just pop that there. It doesn't have to be in that hole obviously and go wherever you like. Um, pin three, I'm just working from a diagram on my computer in front of me. Uh, pin three is, let's see if we can get that in, uh, pin 3 is uh, VSS, otherwise known as 0 volts. So let's go down to the uh, 0 volt rail there, that's pin 3, remember we got 1, 2, 3. Uh, pin 4 of the picket interface is um, the programming data pin. Now uh, the pick uh, has um, 18 pins and some of these pins have multiple functions. Now uh, pin 13 um, has a function of the programming data. I think you can also uh, use it to do other things as well. I don't have the day sheet in front of me but um, pin 13 we're going to use it as the programming data. Now what I found is that when I'm putting that in it feels a bit sloppy. It feels a little bit loose. If you If you have that problem don't just leave it in a loose socket because that might not have a good connection. Go for another hole there, okay? 
Um, and then what do we got? Pin 5, pin 5. And remember we're starting off from the right hand side there, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, pin 5 uh, goes to pin 12 of the pick. And pin 12 of the pick is the programming clock. Now, although we got um, 6 uh, connectors on this pin header here, pin 6 is not connected. So, um, well, rather we're not going to connect it. Uh, it's used for low voltage programming, which is... Uh, not something we need to do. Okay, so let me just see in a little bit. Maybe it will be helpful, maybe not. Okay, so I've got five of those uh, pins uh, connected up there. Um, I've got the power connected up. Don't forget, I've got the power connected up. Power connected up, positive power. I've got the uh, ground, where's the ground? That one, the ground uh, connected for the pick. Uh, what else we got? We got the programming clock and data, that's those two. Um, we've got the, um, we've got the pull-up resistor on the master clear. And then also we got pin one of the pick kit is the master clear slash uh, VPP. Uh, okay, so that's the circuits. That's the circuit just for programming it, okay? So assuming that, that actually works, you'll be able to program this in circuit. Now, um, having visually inspected it, um, then try turning on your switch or connect the battery. So the LED still comes on, which is good. If you had a direct short, the LED wouldn't light up. You should turn it off straight away. So that looks like it's viable. Now, uh, other things that you no doubt you're going to want to do, because at the moment it's not really a terrifically useful circuit, but you're most likely going to want some output. So I'd, I'd probably, you know, like uh, an, LED, an LED array or whatever, uh, you might have a load of LEDs or other components as your outputs. Um, and you're likely to have switches as well, so leave yourself a little bit of room for those for future expansion. Um, my recommendation would be not to connect anything else up at this point, apart from... Uh, having the pick kit connected, uh, the uh, USB for it, and then actually try downloading the program to this because, um, oh, by the way, when you download the program, you've got to have the power on. Um, if it doesn't program, if it doesn't program, then there's something wrong, so there's no point in adding more complexity to your circuit. Um, once you've established that you can download a program to your pick, uh, then I think then it would be uh, good then to progress by adding your outputs and then add some inputs as well. But um, yeah, keep it simple to start off with. And in fact, uh, talking about that, when you have your outputs, maybe write a really, really simple program, maybe just to sequence through the outputs or turn them all on and turn them all off, just to check that they're working before you go for a complex pro uh, program. Now, one final thing that I'd like to just point out uh, this is for my A-level electronic students, is that that standard wiring, uh, which I would say is quite typical, um, I do it all the time when I want to rapidly uh, prototype something using these jumper wires, which are super convenient, I mean they're really nice, um, because they've got stranded wire in there, and then they end up with these solid core pins, which are really nice uh, to use and easy. Um, but when it comes to A-level projects, uh, you unfortunately can't submit your work like that. If you do, you can be marked down. Um, the mark scheme for A-level electronics is going to require you to use wires that are flat on the breadboard, uh, going at right angles, never going diagonally, uh, never jumping over a chip or anything like that. So the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you... Um, cut off your own little jumper wires, strip them off and, and uh, root all the wires very, very neatly. It's not that difficult to do, it's obviously time consuming, it's far quicker to do it this way and that's why uh, when we're just testing out circuits and ideas I, I uh, have no problem with this at all. Okay, But it does make it difficult to diagnose errors, particularly when, you know, silly old me, uh, I've actually chosen uh, three yellows there which are doing different functions, it would have been better and I use some different colours make it easier to distinguish the wires. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I'll probably post another video in due course showing that I am able to program this circuit. Okay, that's it.